We're on Vancouver Island where we have an unusual subspecies of whitetail, the black tailed deer of the Pacific Northwest. These are going to be wary deer and they're difficult to find. There's a deer. The buck would break out of there. We have a crack at him. You don't get many places like Vancouver Island where you can hunt on open lands. These are the toughest bloody deer I have ever hunted. That's a buck. Take him, take him. I think it's a buck. Take him. Yeah, you never had it. Winchester's World of Whitetail. Winchester's World of Whitetail is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Cabela's, celebrating 50 years as the world's foremost outfitter. Bushnell, magnify life. Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation, education, and ethical hunting worldwide. Mossy Oak, it's not a passion, it's an obsession. And by Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care systems in the world. So we're going to skirt along around these little patches of trees through here and see if we can do kind of a little mini push and jump one up out of these clear cut here. They're going to be feeding in these little patches of trees and along the edge of them trees as well. So I should be ready to shoot them running or should I really stop? Be ready to shoot them running. They might stop for you. No. Be ready for anything, right? If he's close, I'll shoot him running. We're in the last four days of the season. Ouch. The rut's over, pretty much done. And we got a weather system moving in. So we're going to have a bit of a battle. But Just I know not, you're up for it. Yeah, it's not going to rain, is it? Well, we're going to get rain. I started learning about black-tailed deer quite a few years ago, and they've always had a certain mystery about them. And there's really not that much good, solid scientific information. Well, when I started hearing about black-tailed deer not being a subspecies of mule deer, but more closely related to whitetails, I really piqued my interest. So when I had an opportunity to come up to Vancouver Island, which is classic blacktail habitat, I kind of jumped on it. Ron's hunting in the diverse and fertile rainforest of Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Beyond trophy blacktails, Vancouver Island is legendary for its enormous and abundant black bears. With over 12,000 bears on the island, hunters encounter numerous Bruins each day, with one hunter reporting 88 sightings in one sit. In recent years, the black bears of Vancouver Island have been identified as a separate subspecies, now known as the island bear, creating even more appeal for hunters seeking to bag a trophy and a unique species in the same hunt. But this time around, Ron is after the spooky, elusive blacktails that inhabit this mountainous and ruggedly beautiful place with his longtime bear hunting buddy and guide, Darren DeLuca. I think you'll find a real difference between blacktail hunting and whitetail hunting. Here it's much denser, uh, the mountains are a little bit steeper, and it's more challenging from the perspective of weather. You're much colder in your whitetail country. Here it's a lot about rain, it's a lot about fog, and suffering the conditions. It's hard on your equipment, it's hard on your gear, it's hard on you, and you got to be tough if you're going to hunt a blacktail. So this is our hideout up here, Ron. We'll cut some of these branches out of here and we'll just hide underneath these trees, get out of the weather a bit. So you can see we've got a real mix of habitat here. You know, we got some of the older timber, we got some Christmas tree, and then we got some open clear cut over here. They'll be using all different portions of it through different parts of the day. Stormy, rainy day, they'll like to stay in the Christmas trees where, uh, where they feel they got pretty good cover. They don't like it in the timber so much then, all the banging branches and stuff. You said you saw a big buck on that ridge? Well, over there, yeah, just I saw him moving through the clearing and up into that timber. 
So we got a game cam set up in that far clearing over there. Some recent studies with mitochondrial DNA indicate that white-tailed deer bred with black tails to produce the mule deer. It looks like the black-tailed white tail were once the same deer, and they evolved separately based on the habitats in which they were living. There are two types of black-tailed deer. The habitat of the Sitka blacktail is along the west coast of Canada. Ron is hunting the Colombian blacktail, which inhabits the west coast of the United States. Here's another reason blacktails are so tough to hunt. Look at that country behind me, mountain after mountain after mountain, and it just rolls on and on, and it's all the same habitat. They could be in here anywhere. Here's a rub. You said, all right, there's a buck using this area, but when did he make that rub, and is he still here? Well, you've got to play the odds if you find a lot of rubs, like Darren says, hunt that area. He's seen a big buck right up in these clearings, and he's got plenty of rubs proving it. There's a deer. A doe. Whereabouts? Let's just watch her and see if a buck comes out to her. I'll try my little doe and heat thing here. Yeah. See, now look at that tail. That is not a little rope tail like a mule deer. It's black on the end of it, but it's wide like a white tail, not quite as wide. And she doesn't have that big white rump patch like a mule deer does. Notice how her antlers aren't very large. <laughs> That's the sign of an immature buck. Coming up, there's deer sign of plenty in the forest. It just looks like a super highway through here. So Ron knows the deer are there. But where? I can just imagine a big buck just come out. That's a buck. Take him. Host Ron Spomer is on Vancouver Island in British Columbia in pursuit of black-tailed deer, the smaller but equally secretive cousin of the whitetails he knows so well. With a few trail cameras and mock scrapes in key spots, Ron and Darren are gathering some inside info on the habits of the local herd. So what's the biggest you've ever seen come off the island? The biggest buck on the island was a 150, I think it was. 150? So that's what we're shooting for, huh? Well, that's it, isn't it? Mostly happening at night, it looks like. Not seeing it happening here. No. Looking like mostly a nighttime move, which of course, when a lot of these guys do move, you can see the little red light there's activated. And away we go. This thick, lush habitat means deer can hide anywhere and appear at any moment. So Ron's always ready with his rifle up and his scope dialed down. You can't hit what you can't see. So this week, Ron takes a look at what to look for in a good scope in this edition of Going Ballistic. So the big question, how do you pick a good scope? What is enough money to spend? Well, it's not so much about the money as the ingredients in the scope and how it's put together. Things like this magnification dial should move smoothly, but not loosely. Take off the caps and see how sharply you get your click turns on your scope. Brightness, everybody talks about huge bright scopes and they wanna have a big objective lens on the end of it to let more light in. So here's how it works. The light comes in, goes through, comes out in a little bitty circle of light called the exit pupil. And that matches up to the pupil in our own eyes. So you wanna make sure this thing matches up fairly closely to your eye. Then make sure you've got fully multi-coated lenses. Every lens in there is going to have anti-reflection coatings on it and several of them and then you'll end up with 90 to 95 percent of the light passing through the scope. That's about as good as you can get. Ron Spomer has a rich history with blacktail, having hunted them in the mountain forest of Oregon in the 1990s. Back then, he came away with a 4x4 green, scoring a 130, and a 5x5 scoring a 126 Boone and Crockett. This is the first time trying his hand at bagging a blacktail in the rainforests of British Columbia. So Ron, we've seen quite a few deer moving into this old growth timber here. Oh yeah, it looks dark and quiet in here. So we're just gonna ease on through here real, real quiet, real close, and just see if we can get on top of something. Deer droppings there, looks like a small deer. This is just a beautiful shot. Isn't that nice, eh? And it's warm too, right? You're out of yeah, the wind. Yeah, the wind. You 
get in close quarters in here, though, we'll have to be ready. You might want to keep your gun at. This is impressive stuff. It's a patch of about, and he said maybe 30, 40 acres of old growth. And it's an island refuge amongst all these clear cuts and various stages of regrowth. And I cannot believe the deer use in here. There are droppings everywhere. And the little patches of snow that are left have tracks all over them. It just looks like a super highway through here. It's so different from the plains and prairies that we've been hunting, and even the Texas brush country. British Columbia should have a spot on every hunter's bucket list. If you're looking for North American big game like moose, elk, mule deer, mountain goat, stone sheep, and even grizzly, British Columbia has it all. Take him. This is Mission Impossible. Look at how dark and jumbled this place is. Busted logs falling over one another, tall ferns. You would have to be a cougar to get a buck in this stuff by still hunting. And even as wet as it is, I snap sticks underneath all these leaves and duff. I would have to go about 50 times slower than I'm going to have any success at still hunting. Now, I haven't even seen a bed. You know, it makes sense to me that they'd get on a high spot like this so they're not lying in the water and get underneath a big, dense, evergreen tree of some kind to keep the water off of them, but I'm sure not seeing them. Yet there's droppings all over down there. It's almost like this is a communal bathroom or something. Anybody who can hunt blacktail successfully and stuff like this is one heck of a hunter. Secretive, I think they out white tail and white tail. <laughs> starting to rain a little bit. Now it's starting to rain. With all the doe sightings, Ron's confident there are racked bucks in the neighborhood. But the arrival of a heavy rainforest downpour forces the hunters out of the woods and back to camp for the night. When World of Whitetail returns, Vancouver Island puts Ron's relentless attitude to the test. I think it's a buck. Yes, it's a buck. Kick him. Winchester's World of Whitetail is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Ram trucks, guts, glory, ram. Cabela's, celebrating 50 years as the world's foremost outfitter. Bushnell, magnify life. Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation, education, and ethical hunting worldwide. Mossy Oak, it's not a passion, it's an obsession. Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care systems in the world. And by Mule Deer Foundation, leader in mule deer and blacktail deer conservation. As bow hunting legend Fred Bear says, the very remoteness kindles the imagination of the adventurous hunter. From the top of any mountain, the challenge extends far and wide until the mountain meets the sky. For Ron Spalmer, the biggest challenge of this trip is the weather. 
as Ron copes with the rain and fog, the struggle of dealing with bad weather becomes crystal clear. From reduced visibility to changing behavior patterns, weather can wreak havoc on your chances to see and harvest trophy animals. Beyond the obvious discomfort, wet weather also makes tracking wounded animals so difficult that many hunters refuse to shoot if they feel a blood trail could be washed away. It's perkin', I think we've got coffee. All right. You're a good man for a Canadian guy. We're not bad for a Canadian, huh? <laughs> Persistence is important in this kind of hunting. When you don't have a lot of open views like out in the prairie. Let's move up to the corner of the slash here, Ron. When we're out there in the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, and you can see a long ways, you're finding most of the deer crossing that country. And that's all helped by the fact that they have to go from a bedding area out to a feed field. So they're in the open twice a day at least. Well, here they essentially live in their dining room. They can stay in there, don't have to travel. Nice day if you like the wind. We won't call them reindeer because that's too corny. Delicious. I was just amazed at the numbers of droppings I was finding in a small area, both in the clear cut and in the old growth. So the deer are here. We're just not finding them because they're not moving vast distances from bedding areas to feeding areas and back again. You know, for as windy and rainy as it is, it's really not that uncomfortable hunting. When you've got good Gore-Tex on, you're pretty well covered. It's not that cold. Is this weather any good for blacktail hunting? I would, I would prefer well, colder and snow instead oh, of rain. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You want to see uh, some snow on the ground. You know where they've been. You know where they're going a little bit. But this wind isn't too bad. It's going to push them out of the timber. They're going where they can see. Okay. And uh, we're, we're hugging along the sides yeah, yeah. there, just glassing well, in front of ourselves. That's where the does have been. Right tight up against Why it. Why don't we hunt bucks instead of does for a while? There's two more. Two more going up the hill back there. If a buck follows those two up that hill, it came from under this little dip here. If a buck would break out of there, we'd have a crack at him. I think the buck went back this way into the thick trees. He's too smart then to run across the open. Dag nabbit. These are the toughest bloody deer I have ever hunted. I've got a suspicion we're seeing too many does. Because if you see 10 does and no bucks, that suggests the bucks are either A, super smart, B, already shot out because it's the last four days of the season, C, nocturnal, or D, just not there. That's a buck. Shot, but I didn't want to make a mistake and shoot a dog. Oh, God. Choosing to come up empty rather than to take any iffy shot at a so so buck, Ron's decision not to shoot embodies the old saying that discretion is the better part of valor. Hey, if you think you're a pretty good whitetail hunter and you want a challenge, take up blacktails on Vancouver Island. You've got steep, mountainous country. You've got thick, thick forest. It's raining all the time. There aren't a lot of deer, and there aren't a lot of big, old deer. If you want a challenge, try blacktails. What an unusual and amazing season. 
I would have never imagined I could come up with as many wonderful opportunities at large mature bucks as we did this series. The habitat changes just blow you away from those steep canyons and rock walls in Washington State and Idaho and then up to the cold prairies in Alberta and then down into the Midwest prairies, that famous prairie pothole region of South Dakota, down into Nebraska, in Kansas, and Texas. To think that whitetails exist in those habitats from dry, dry deserts practically up into the wetter rainforests of the Northwest, it's really amazing. What an opportunity to be able to hunt one species in so many different places and all in one season. It worked, Fred. We got him. It worked.